Very excited to see what Bakugo's team can do. Bakugo episodes rarely disappoint. And just jumping right into it, I see. Also curious what Colander Man's powers are, besides removing water from pasta. Early bird. What does that mean? Currently class A and class B are neck and neck. Yes, it's been very equitable so far. Truth is, class A's win was mostly thanks to Shinzo, so it barely counts. <laughs> Honestly, I gotta, I gotta respect it. He's done the, the Tetsu Tetsu thing going all the way to the other extreme where it, it just, it ends up being great. Is this how you'll react if you mess up in a real fight? Meanwhile, class B is coming up with plans and countermeasures to win. Right. It sort of doesn't matter what the commentary is. Class A still has plenty to offer. You certainly are sweet on Class A. And we're all sweet in Class A. <laughs> Inappropriate teacher whose name I forget. So I started off this arc being very, very critical of Class 1B. Let me give another perspective on it that speaks to their credit. I think that they benefit from having a higher target. And I think that very often, or at least sometimes, you can tell who is more dominant in a rivalry by who cares less about the other side. You know what I mean? The fact that Class 1B is obsessed, or at least some of them are, with Class 1A, kind of speaks to the idea that, at least in terms of image, Class 1A is sort of where the focus is in terms of, you know, like the best students. But that actually can be a great thing for Class 1B because they have a target and they're obviously very, very motivated to change that. Whereas, what is Class 1A thinking about? There are fewer stakes for them going into this match, at least initially, because Class 1B is just Class 1B, right? But now they've sort of been woken up. So while I do think experience should play a major role and generally I think so far, at least from what I know about the two classes, Class 1A has more heavy hitters. I feel like it does make sense. You can make up for a lot of that gap with just like drive and desire. I mean, that's one of the biggest ideas in the show, right? It's like will and strength and like shouldering burdens and things like that. I just feel like in general, having the right rivals, you know, having the right targets or peers or whatever it is, is such a effective tool for growth. I mean, what you're aiming for will determine largely, I think, the rate at which you do anything. And while things like envy or overcompetitiveness can be very negative traits, they can also be amazing traits for growth if properly leveraged. You know, like if class B can be represented by Monoma, for example, what a passion for beating them. You know what I mean? It just becomes an energy source. You know, it turns a negative thing into something really powerful. I'm fond of every student. Especially the ones in class 1A. Forward to seeing what you do. And especially and what you've learned. Young Midoriya and young Bakugo. Why can't you keep up? He's expecting people to follow as usual. It hasn't changed much since the sports festival. I don't know. You gotta be careful sleeping on Bakugo. He's always doing things beneath the surface and like yelling on the surface. You three better be ready to support me. Especially you. Make sure you keep track of the enemy, ears. Hey, ears. my name is Jiro. You gotta earn names with Bakugo. We earn names around here. Idiot. We're not waiting for the right moment. Is this leadership? <laughs> is this, is this leadership? Kind of? He's definitely taking charge. They should be around here somewhere. Find them! Yeah, I mean, this is like the ultimate scouting technique. But they could be intentionally making noise. A distraction? This is a trap! Yeah. Hi. And bye. <laughs> is this another person for the, the Mirio team that's forming? Quark, lizard, lizard tail, tail splitter. splitter. She can divide her entire body into pieces that move at her will. While we're talking about the extensions of Quirks, I can imagine her actually becoming something like Miro, maybe, because, I mean, this is a lot. It's a huge stretch, but if she could split things down to an atomic level or something like that, you know what I mean? I think I just miss Miro. I think that's the bottom line. I'm just seeing him everywhere. I knew Setsuna's plan would defeat them. Class B, Kojiro Bondo. I've been wondering about this guy for so long. I've been calling him Colander Man. He can produce blades on any part of his body. <laughs> nice, the flashy one. I'll at least protect my teammates. There you go, Sato. Or, or Bakugo. How do you, like, use your quirk in training if you're this guy? <laughs> Damn. Awesome. I think what sort of rounds out the whole thing for Bakugo is that he's got both sides of it. Like, he's taking charge, and there's something that comes off as arrogant or selfish about that. But then, he also is the first to sacrifice. Like, to not only reap the benefits, but also the risks. And so that makes it more authentic and something that commands respect and something that is more rooted to actual values rather than just someone looking to have power or throw their weight around save people to win win to save people are you watching he's learning You've gotten even stronger yeah learning and incorporating one more thing whenever you guys are in danger i'll protect you <laughs> no one will question our victory because our match is gonna be flawless 
Four this to zero and no injuries. feels like leadership. Understand. Sato's feeling it. All right, I believe it. I feel it. If we fight him like we not so confident now, are you, Lizard Girl? We'll definitely lose this match. Well, those tides shifted pretty quickly. If we focus on Bakugo and force him to make a mistake, the rest of them won't stand a chance. Oh, but that I don't know. Easier said than done. Bakugo is a force. If I concentrate, I can tell them apart. Let's go. There you go. That felt like recognition of Jiro or ears. <laughs> Calendar man looking like a McDonald's Happy Meal toy. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. This started off as like the Bakugo solo mission ended up with being ultimate teamwork. I'll protect you. And when I'm in danger. Hope you like my heartbeat surround. You guys had better save me. <laughs> I feel like that's key. That's key to the speech. It was clever of them to hide that until later. That part of it. But I finally warned <laughs> Pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're all feeling it. The rest of them support him. He's creating the space. <laughs> oh, that's pretty damn cool. Damn. Being in the band loosened him up, but he's still driving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet that did have a big effect. The concert. That's interesting. This is a TV show, right? But I know someone like Bakugo. I know someone who has that kind of will. I mean, he's much nicer than Bakugo is outwardly, but. In competition, like in sports, I have like never seen the guy lose. And it's really clear watching him that a lot of that is just natural ability, natural athleticism, but a lot of it is just will. Like he just refuses to lose and will just pull the craziest, craziest things out of, out of thin air. And it's not an arbitrary thing. It's not like he just has this weird ability. It's deeply connected to his self image. It's connected to what he wants. And he, he feels so strongly about not being someone who capitulates, you know, like earning every moment for himself. And it's amazing to see, you know, you, just naturally react to it. Someone creates that kind of space where they believe in something, you know, they believe they can do something. They want something with a singular vision. You match their energy. You know, I think there's wasted space that comes from half expecting failure or like leaving space for failure because that gives sort of an emotional out, right? It's like, well, it's too difficult. There are also perhaps fears of not wanting to take the spotlight, not wanting to stand out because of the extra burden that that carries. It's tough to step into that role. It's easier to follow someone else who takes that role. Like all three of the other team members want the same thing. It's just that they don't have the conviction or at least didn't make the decision to be that for this match. But Baku is that. So it's a relief, I feel, especially because it's reciprocal. Like he has our interest at heart. It's not about Baku shining. It's a about a common goal. An important part of what makes Bakugo believable here and admirable and followable is that he'll be the first to go down. He'll be the first one to get hurt. That's immediately clear. You gotta love it. I mean, even as a viewer, I'm immediately just on his side and I want to have a 4-0 sweep. I'm back to being a class 1A fanboy. The parts that leave her stop moving after a set amount of time and then she regenerates them onto her main body. Oh, there's gonna be like a lot of her pieces lying around later. She can't regrow those pieces forever. That would make sense. Jiro said it sounded like so Sarah's tape ends up being used as a, a tracking device. My theory. With the grenade, that's so genius. Nicely done. This will also be You're very, kidding. very close. How have you changed this uh, much? man. <laughs> I love how they're mid-battle reflecting on Bakugo's growth. You can see how much it means. My goal's always been the same. Yeah, that seems seems right. To surpass All Might and become the number one hero. Yeah, he's just like becoming better at it, and maybe for better reasons. The match didn't even last. Oh, that was fast. So that's the first one episode battle. Hell yeah. We're only halfway through the episode. <laughs> Making really quick work of Plaz One B there. That is wow, wow. I'm I'm touched. Oh my God. Praise for myself. <laughs> Solid win. Great job today. This is so touching. A monster like Bakugo turns into a team player. There's no weakness for us to exploit. Afraid that's true. I agree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like that might also be a mistake to be counting on other people's weaknesses. I feel like going into a competition or some kind of battle or whatever, expecting your opponent to make a mistake is kind of a losing strategy from the beginning. I like how the match is over, but they're still following Bakugo. You gave me chills. <laughs> this is more than a match. Gotchan, out of my way! Uh, Deku just doesn't know how to read the air. So what does that even mean? Oh, that was oddly good from Deku. I'm moving so fast you won't be able to catch up. That's what Deku likes to hear. Speaking of setting targets. You're trash! A freaking extra! He's pumped up. You have a good childhood friend in him. 
friend. <laughs> Everyone is a side character in other people's stories, but we are each the protagonist of our own insight. lives. Well said. We have five people, so that gives us. And also Shinzo hand. now, yeah. Considering his mobility and combat skills, he's the same, if not better, than Bakugo. I wonder if we'll get a repeat of the Shinzo control and then past avatars re-emerging. At the sports festival, he was able to break free of my quirk. Right, right. And that's significant to this growing, growing thing. Speaking of drive, though, I feel like Monoma has it. he won't be able to copy Midoriya's quirk. Okay, so he can't always copy. This battle will determine if he'll be able to transfer into the hero course. I'll uh, give him a slot. He's earned it. And we make things... <laughs> All right, really selling yourselves there, guys. This is your moment, Mineta. Right. I believe in you. We go with Focus on something else other than girls. Life. No one's going to fall for that. I can act as the bait. Deku. What an entrance. It's already juiced up. We can definitely win. <laughs> yeah. Also channeling that, that focus, but in a much nicer way. Speaking of creating space. I can't embarrass myself. I got my eye on Ralph Wickham over here. Twin impact. My total sweep has been wrong, but we can still win. Oh my, wow. Holy whoa. <laughs> so just some really, really killer top-notch stuff from Bakugo. I've said this before, and I don't want to say that personality isn't important. I think it is. I think it largely depends on context, but I, I do think there's something to the idea that a lot of flaws will be forgiven. Like, a lot of flaws will be forgiven if someone conducts themselves in such a way that other people around them are assured that they can deliver a result that they also want. Like, in this episode, it doesn't matter that Bakugo is kind of a jerk to Jiro, right? Because he's amazing. Like, he's so amazing. And Jiro is fine with it, too, because Jiro wants the same thing Bakugo wants, and she wants that way more than she cares about like him calling her ears right and i think that phenomenon is notable for for a couple reasons one is that i think that it actually creates sort of a manageable path to being likable or to larger broader success despite the lack of let's say social skills or natural aptitude for people there's a path there you know like just being excellent being really committed to something finding a craft and being really good at that craft through hard work and discipline and becoming a big fish in a small pond in that arena, you know what I mean? If you can be really amazing at something, you will sort of be assured of having certain base needs met, I think. Which is, for me, a comforting thought. I like thinking about things that way. I like anything that will take sort of the randomness out of life, you know, the randomness out of success, and put, you know, more more power in the hands of the individual to craft their own lives. And I think that's a, that's a path, right? Like just being great, being excellent. And also, maybe on a more negative note, I think it's important not to get lost in that as well. Like, I think a lot of times we overlook things, important things, you know, important personality things, or important ethical things, because we have a desired result and we know that someone can deliver that result or someone does something really well that we enjoy and so we're able to overlook some of the negative things. You know, it's important to sort of have space for both. But then what makes Bakugo even more amazing is that it's not just about him being great. In this episode, he reaches down a hand, at least emotionally or spiritually or whatever, to his teammates and like pulls them up to that level as well and trusts them to be there too. And in doing so, gives them an opportunity to feel that, like experience that, which is sort of amazing. No wonder they rally around him, you know? And it's not hollow, you know, speaking of leadership, I think one of the big problems I see with leadership all the time is that people are quick to lead or like be in the front until things get rough and then there's like a fall guy. You know, it's easy to sort of lead when things are good. You know, it's easy to want to be in the spotlight when things are going well or when there are accolades. But I think what separates the purely power hungry or ambitious from people who actually are dedicated, you know, actually have a deep desire and commitment to whatever goal it is, is the ability to like take the hits, you know, take the falls as well in bad times. You hear that a lot about like ancient leaders, right? Like they'd be on the battlefield leading the charge. You can't fake that kind of thing. Or you can, but it's way more difficult. Like the cost is is so great that it's much easier to be convicted or rally behind someone of that nature than someone who sort of like sends you off to die, you know? Bakugo, in being the one to risk his own body to help them, sort of guarantees to the group that he has their interests and their interests are aligned. And so they can like dispense with that you know, that aspect of their anxiety or their distrust or whatever, and just commit to the goal, which is really cool. I also feel like it's just so exciting when you, you meet someone who aims high. Like, everyone's aiming for victory, but Bakugo comes in and is like, not only are we gonna win, we're gonna win in one episode, and we're gonna experience no casualties. And everyone's like, yeah, that, that sounds pretty good. Let's do that. And boom, they're in sync. So yeah, overall, just another really great Baku episode. I feel like he doesn't have that much screen time, but like his his words, you know, there's always a lot more there than you see on the surface. Before the video ends, I gotta give a huge, huge, huge thank you to to all Patreon members for the support. This has been sort of one of the roughest 
roughest times in this channel's history because as a lot of you probably know I got not one but two copyright strikes from TV Tokyo the I guess copyright holder of Fruits Basket for the Fruits Basket series in what feels to me like sort of a double jeopardy or triple jeopardy with both strikes coming from older videos you know sort of a punishment twice for the same crime and what I assume or expect would have been three times and the termination of the channel had I not deleted all the Fruits Basket videos and so going forward Fruits Basket will just be Patreon only I am planning on bringing other things to fill that YouTube slot if I can and time allowing. But I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody for all the support. You know, a lot of people who enjoyed the Fruits Basket series signed up for Patreon and it means a lot to me that I'm not just a total victim to YouTube sort of flawed, let's say, copyright system. Which is not to be too critical of YouTube. I mean, it's, it's tough, honestly. How do you manage copyright policies given the unbelievable amount of content? that goes up on the platform while protecting yourself legally and all that stuff, you know, I, I get it. But yeah, it just became very, very clear to me this month that it's really necessary to have other platforms and Patreon is the only platform I have now other than YouTube. And I would not have that without you guys. I would not have that extra layer of peace of mind because it is a terrifying prospect of like just losing the whole channel, you know? So huge thank you to you and also a shout out to those who joined the, the top tier on Patreon recently. Rosa A, Ken Pachizaraki, Casey Turner, Super Snipper, Silent Shadow, Geneva the Weeba, Hank Fuller, Jordan, and that darn rogue. Huge thank you to you guys. Thank you to all patrons. And thank you to everybody for watching and for supporting day in and day out. And see you guys next time for what will be the final battle in what's turned out to be a pretty fun arc. Bye.